Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at both Lululemon and Adobe stocks before their upcoming earnings releases later in the week. But before we get into everything, I want to say remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast and make sure to check out our new zacks.com slash promo page for a look into some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into Lululemon and Adobe, I like to start by taking sort of a broader overview of the market to help bring more context for what's going on with both Lululemon and Adobe. So the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both hit fresh records last week as stocks continued their rally to start December. The gains come after the Dow climbed 12% in November for its best month since 1987. In Wall Street, this is even more important. Wall Street is finally casting a bit of a wider net outside of the pandemic high flyers, such as Zoom Video and Target and other companies that have actually benefited during the coronavirus economy in that social distancing world. So the positive vaccine news helped more stocks climb in the month of November. So 450 stocks climbed in November. Uh, Within the S&P 500, this marked the largest share for any month since April, according to the Wall Street Journal, and crushed October's 212 figure and September's 153 company figure. So investors are clearly projecting that some of the hard hit areas like energy and travel will perhaps be able to bounce back in 2021 if a vaccine is rolled out. Meanwhile, the earnings outlook continues to improve for the fourth quarter and beyond and the U.S. economy remains in comeback mode. So also in the background of all of this is the Fed, which plans to keep its interest rate near zero through at least 2023, which should continue to provide a boost for stocks as investors hunt for yield uh, in a market or hunt for returns in a market that's pretty starved for yield at the moment. Uh, And clearly, all of this sets up a relatively bullish case for 2021. And with that in mind, I also want to quickly look at the broader earnings outlook since that's going to go into what we're talking about with Lululemon and Adobe. So this is from Friday, our most up-to-date Zach's uh, estimates. Uh, so for the total S&P 500 earnings for Q3 are expected to decline just over 7% on about 0.8% lower revenues, which would mark a huge improvement from Q2 as the earnings outlook continues to improve. So we also note that Technology is continuing to drive this growth, and as most people would know at this point, it just makes sense. The sectors with the weakest growth expected in Q3 are transportation, energy, and consumer discretionary spending, with transportation uh, and energy as the the biggest laggers there. And as we mentioned, once again, that the tech world is continuing to bounce back. So if we look at the S&P 500 picture as a whole, for the calendar year, we're expecting earnings to decline about 17% on 3.9% lower revenues in 2020, with it expected to bounce back, with earnings expected to jump about 22% on 7.5% higher revenues in 2021. So we're expecting a big growth next year. So with all of this in mind, we're now going to dive into Lululemon, which trades under the ticker LULU. Before it reports its third quarter fiscal 2020 financial results on Thursday, December 10th, it's one of the last big names left to report in the Q3 earnings season. So the athleisure standout has turned into a sportswear powerhouse, and it suffered early on, like a lot of other companies that were deemed quote-unquote non-essential at the beginning of the coronavirus as its stores were forced to close. Yet, despite all of that, the stock continued to surge during the early months of the market's coronavirus comeback as Wall Street was able to look to the positives, such as its nearly 70% climb in online revenue, even though its sales dipped about 17% in the three-month period that ended in May. So Wall Street was looking towards its big, booming e-commerce growth in the first and second quarter. So if we look ahead then to the second quarter, uh, its Q2 revenue actually climbed big, big return to growth after a big drop in the first quarter with its e-commerce accounting for about 60% of total sales against just 25% in the year ago period. So luckily they had 
preparing for the e-commerce world like every other big successful retailer has been, and it really paid off in both the first and second quarters. Its direct consumer revenue was up about 155% last quarter, so some big, big growth on that e-commerce front. And Lulem was also claim able to climb despite those near-term setbacks uh, because investors were able to see that long game and ath- the athleisure giant is certainly looking like it's going to be a longer term winner. So now we're going to take a little bit more of a holistic view of what's going on with the company before we dive into what to expect going forward for Q3 and beyond. So Lululemon has forced everyone from Gap to Target and others to start their own athleisure brands. This is uh, They've also been able to step outside of their really popular women's business and jump into men's fashion as well as outerwear as they try to challenge the likes of North Face and Canada Goose and others. So the company also sells more work-appropriate clothing, which is a little less important at the moment, self-care products and more. And company executives, as we sort of alluded to, expect to double the size of their menswear business by 2023. They also expect more to more than double their digital revenues and quadruple their international sales as they push further into Asia. And they've also yeah, been able to grow through their own standalone stores. They're not in shopping malls. They're not facing the downturn that department stores are. So they've, they've really been able to stand out in this market. And then the firm also announced in late June, and this is something that could prove to be successful in the long run, they bought digital-focused at-home fitness company Mirror, that helps them enter that category alongside Peloton and others, which could be a a big hit as even if things start to return to normal, it seems like the last thing lots of people are going to be willing to do is to jump back in a, a crowded gym and have to wear a mask while you're working out. Maybe it's a little more difficult for most people to breathe, even if you're in great health to breathe with a mask as you're trying to intensely work out. So that could prove to be a big hit for Lululemon as they purchase that mirror company, which Look it up. It, it's a little. It's basic. You you watch videos and you can see yourself working out in a mirror. Uh, it's like Peloton without the bike. Basically, is the the simple premise. I encourage you to look it up if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so overall, the company closed last quarter with about just over 500 stores, up from 460 in the year ago period. So they've continued to open more stores, and the company is also as a whole changing, helping change the way a lot of people dress, uh, dress down more than ever. And this was even in office settings and dressing more casual as, is the broader, the broader look. And certainly the pandemic has amplified this where far few people are going into the office and that athleisure business could continue to boom. And this has certainly been reflected in the stock price. So Lululemon stock has soared about 630% in the past five years. This blows away rivals Nike and Adidas, with Nike up about 100%, and Adidas up about 230% over the stretch. This even helps Lululemon outpace Amazon and Netflix. So more recently, Lululemon's up about 63% in the last year. First, Nike's 43% and its sector's 15% climb. With that said, the stock has cooled off a bit recently, which could be a positive sign for some investors. It's up about 17% in the past six months to lag its industry, which includes a big fall off after the market's September highs. That said, Lululemon is up about 8% last month, as we just talked about at the top, as the market bounced back big in November. So Lululemon closed regular trading Friday at about $377 per share, which puts it about 5% off its all-time highs. We should also note, though, that Lululemon is firmly a growth stock. It's trading at over 60 times forward earnings, which is double its industry's average. Yet, if you look at it in terms of forward sales, it's trading at about 9.7 times forward 12-month sales, which compares to Nike's about 4.8 times. We should also note that's not too far above its one-year median of about 8.2 times, and it actually trades 14% below its year-long highs, which is a positive sign since the stock price itself is trading just 5% below those highs. So its valuation is in a better position than it has been earlier in the year. So now we're going to go ahead and see what to expect going forward. So currently, our Zach's estimates are calling for 
Lululemon's Q3 revenue to jump about 10.1% to just over $1 billion. It is expected to post a decline on the bottom line. So it's it's adjusted earnings are expected to dip about 11.5% to 85 cents per share. But if we take a more broad look, the company's Q4 revenue is expected to climb 13% to help lift its adjusted earnings by 3%. And then overall, uh, we see that we're calling for its full year 2020 revenue to jump about 4%. And this is with those big declines in the Q1 uh, or big the big decline in Q2 earlier in the year during the coronavirus period. So, and then looking further ahead, we're expecting the company's 2021 revenue to jump over 25% above our current year estimate. So 4% this year and another 25% growth is expected next year to get all the way up to about $5.2 billion. And then it's also expected to jump back on the bottom line as well. We're calling for 15% uh, or 15% decline this year but then a 52% jump in the next year. So a big return to bottom line growth is expected in 2021, along with over 25% growth on the bottom line. So to put this growth into perspective, this year, obviously, it's being impacted by the coronavirus. It's pretty much out of its hands. But if we look to that 25% growth, this this would top the company's revenue growth from pretty much every single year in the last five years. And amid all of this, the company was able to grow when it was doing 15% growth, 13% growth, 14% growth in a couple of the recent periods. So 25% growth would be a big, big jump for Lululemon. We should also note now we're going to take a quick look at its earnings revision activity. So its current Q3 estimates are down slightly from where uh, we were projecting before the company reported its Q2 results, so trending in the wrong direction there. But overall, the they're, they're trending somewhat downward. So we were calling for about 30 days ago, our full year estimate was calling for $4.26 per share, and now we're calling for $4.17 per share. For the year bef- uh, for 2021, we were calling for about six dollars and forty six cents per share. That's down to six dollars and thirty six cents. So trending a little bit in the wrong direction in terms of that longer term earnings outlook, which helps the Lululemon hold a Zach's rank number three hold at the moment. And the stocks did slip about one percent in morning trading on Monday. And we should also note for any investors who are considering buying Lululemon. In trading it around its earnings season, it has traded pretty heavily around earnings the last two periods, and actually it fell pretty significantly both in April and July uh, when it reported its results with, yeah, as I mentioned, pretty significant downturns, even though the stock has been trending in the right direction as a whole over this past year and the last five years. So it might be a little risky to try to play it as a, a near-term earnings play, but longer-term investors certainly might want to consider Lululemon. You don't need to be as focused as t- trying to time the stock necessarily, but it might be better just to sort of wait and see what happens on Thursday, especially since this, the stock is up so big so far as a lot of stocks are over the last year and certainly during this coronavirus comeback but Lululemon, for all the reasons we mentioned, is sort of changing that fashion world. Its outlook looks pretty strong. And in the pandemic, maybe people decide they're going to work home from home longer than anyone ever expected. And really, what's the point of buying nice, fancy clothes if you're just going to be working from home all day? So that really could help Lululemon, as we mentioned, for the longer term. And its mirror purchase could end up being significant if, if people don't race back to the gyms anytime soon, which in my personal opinion, I don't, I don't see how gyms are just going to all of a sudden become super, super popular again. Uh, any, anytime soon, uh, especially if people are forced to wear masks while they're working out, which as I said, even for the healthiest of people could be kind of a detriment to their workouts. So now we're going to move on to a totally different company, but it also reports it's what is it's Q4 results of 2020 on December 10th, which is, this upcoming Thursday, and that is Adobe, which trades under the ticker ADBE. And it is one of, uh, going to be 
the first group of stocks that's reporting uh, its Q4 results, which go into our Q4 totals for here at Zacks. So let's dive into the broader picture of the cloud software giant with a $240 billion market cap quickly. For those of you who don't know, Adobe suite of subscription-based creative and design software, which includes everything from Photoshop to Illustrator, are often regarded as pretty irreplaceable by many individuals, businesses, and schools. So its creative cloud can also be viewed in a similar light to Microsoft's Office suite, just in the creative aspect where it's pretty invaluable to whoever's using it on a daily basis. It helps provide a solid moat in a cloud software world that's pretty pretty crowded at the moment with definitely companies offering very similar similar things to companies uh, in this, as I said, that very crowded cloud software space. Adobe certainly stands out as offering something that's pretty unique and pretty irreplaceable for all the, the people that are using it. And then along with its creative and design business, the company has also expanded its business-focused platforms, uh, offering solutions for marketing and commerce. And also it has its its PDF business, which it, it helped, it, it really invented that PDF space years and years ago. It also has an e-signature unit. But, so it is more diverse beyond that uh, creative and design software space. And the company's growth really does showcase how important its offerings are. So Adobe has expanded its full year sales by over 22% in each of the past four years with 15% growth coming in FY15. So it's been able to grow at a pretty significant clip. More recently, Adobe beat our Q3 estimates in mid-September with revenue up about 14% for the second quarter in a row, while its adjusted earnings climbed about 15%. So the firm's ability to grow during these rough economic conditions shows how important its offerings are and it, to its customers, and it really highlights the strength of that broader cloud software model that's seen everyone from Salesforce to Zoom be able to grow during this social distancing economy. And certainly software is, is so ingrained in all of these businesses, big or small, in any field that that cloud space is certainly one that people want to be exposed to as possible for, for years and years to come because businesses really can't, they don't have any other option. They're, they're, their business is so intertwined with the software they're running that uh, it's vital to every, mostly every aspect of their business. Uh, and as we mentioned, Adobe's been able to capitalize on this. Uh, so if we look ahead, Zach's estimates call for the company's fourth quarter sales to climb over 12% to help lift its adjusted earnings by 16%. And then a more holistic view, its fiscal 2020 revenue is projected to climb nearly 15% to come in at about $13 billion with its FY21 sales expected to climb another 15% higher. So this would stretch its streak of double-digit sales growth to seven straight years for Adobe, which is pretty impressive for a company of its size and age. And then if we look on the bottom end, the creative software firm's adjusted earnings are projected to climb about 26% this year in fiscal 2020, and then another 12% in 2021. That said, Adobe has seen some downward earnings revision activity recently. So its most accurate estimate, which is our, the most up-to-date estimate we have from analysts, are trending just slightly in the wrong direction. So our, our current estimate the most accurate estimate is $2.64 per share, which is down from $2.65 per share. And then that's affecting uh, its fiscal 2020 results. And then if we look at 2021, that consensus or the most accurate, most up-to-date uh, estimate we have is down slightly from what we have as uh, $11.12. So just this near-term negative revisions or revisions trending in the wrong direction. Currently have Adobe holding a Zach's rank number four sell at the moment. Uh, as we mentioned, this is based on those recent revisions that are trending in the wrong direction. Obviously those things can change as we have more analysts uh, put in revisions and going into its report. So after Thursday, we'll certainly see uh, new revisions as we look ahead to beyond uh, the current two quarters and going into next year. So don't take 
too much weight necessarily on that Zach's ranked number four sell at the moment as it's based just on some of these most up-to-date estimates that are a little uh, below what our overall consensus estimates are trending in, uh, if that makes any sense. So, for instance, if we look at uh, the brokerage recommendations we have for Adobe, we have uh, currently 17 different brokerage recommendations uh, for Adobe at Zacks and 13 come in at a strong buy, two more at a hold, or two more at a buy and two more at a hold. So none rest below a hold and 13 of those 17 are at a strong buy, which those are different than our Zacks ranks. And that's that's not based on just the uh, the earnings trends, which is what the Zacks rank is based on. So that's the reason Adobe is holding a Zacks rank number four sell at the moment. And obviously these are fluid rankings that change all the time. So along with its ranking, the company currently holds a B grade for growth in our style score system. And on top of that, the cloud software firm has continued to buy back shares last quarter, and its stock is up about 60% in the last 12 months. And this is against the tech sector's 40% climb. And it might also surprise some investors just how strong Adobe stock has been over the last five years. So over the last five years, it has outpaced all of the FANG stocks. So that's Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, uh, well, Microsoft's not in that group, but it really should be in that group. So it's outpaced Fang and Microsoft. So all six of those massive, massive tech companies, tech companies, Adobe is up over 440% over the last five years. And that outpaces all those stocks pretty easily with Amazon at the nearest in third place at about 366% growth over that five year stretch. So that might surprise some investors just how strong Adobe's been over the last five years. And as we mentioned, it's up about 60% in the last 12 months as well compared to the tech sector's 40% climb. That said, the stock has cooled off somewhat recently. The stock's up about 7% in the last three months versus the tech sector's 14% climb. It did jump over 2% on Monday morning to about $497 per share, which has it sitting about 7% off its highs heading into its upcoming report. Uh, and as we, as we touched on, the firm's ability to grow during these rough economic conditions and its ability to remain vital to all of these various companies, individuals, schools, anyone who wants to use its creative software and its business-focused software. Uh, it, it, it's proven that the companies need that and its ability to grow steadily on the top line for years and years, and it's expected to continue to do that. Certainly makes it look like a, a strong buy and hold candidate within this cloud software space. As we mentioned, though, with Lululemon, uh, in the near term, anything could happen. Uh, it could it could face some selling pressure if it has some weak guidance or it fails to beat on the top or bottom lines. As we mentioned as well, it's a Zach's rank number five or four sell at the moment based on some downward earnings revisions in the near term. But as we mentioned, uh, it certainly seems to be a worthy candidate on the longer term outlook and if you don't want to have to find an exact time to get in on the stock, it's certainly worth considering Adobe at any time. But if you want to take 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 less chances, certainly it's worth just waiting until after they report on Thursday to see what really happens. But certainly both Lululemon and Adobe are strong candidates within vastly different industries that appear to be sort of uh, on the cutting edge of what they're doing from that athleisure market to this creative cloud software market. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.